there's a rhythm that the market tends to sort of run through. I guess the thing that I find most interesting, Chris, is that because we go back and look at those um, high inflation periods of the past, we've seen some pretty big moves in uh, energy and precious metals and just commodities in general. And we've seen some really big boom and bust cycles, but we've actually seen um, them not just have a boom and bust cycle, but do it over again and, and maybe even do it third time. Unfortunately, what most people don't do is they, they look at the dailies or the weeklies and, and don't go back and look at some of the monthly, some of the longer term charts there. You and I know, Chris, the importance of being in a strong uh, sector. Um, you know, you, 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 you know, you, your odds of success are always double if you're, you're trading in, the, in a strong sector here yeah. uh, as opposed to a weak sector. It's- U.S. markets have fallen with tech heavy falling the hardest. Looking at the equinox of the year, which is leading into when the Fed are going to have their first rate drop in a very long time. Does that coincide with the market top or could it be a shorter term low? We're going to look at that as well as some of the biggest companies on the ASX to understand how they're setting up for this part of the market. Gary Glover is going to guide us through his weekly report. Good morning, Gary. How are you? I'm good, Chris. You've got a fair bit in this week's report in that sense. We've got a lot happening in the US markets. We've got US, uh, the Federal Reserve and their changes on the interest rates, possibly not the Aussie, the implications to the FX. But I like in this week's report, you've got some of the biggest companies on the ASX that so we get to pull apart the charts and understand where they sit and what's pushing and pulling. So as you write this report each week, you send it out to your clients on a Monday, we'll talk about it on a Tuesday. Is there anything that's coming out to you and changes to what you're seeing? Uh, especially if we look at the US indices or overarching things on the market? Uh, yeah, like the only thing I was sort of mindful of there, just because um, like we do have the seasonal week period here, obviously for election years, sort of like, you know, obviously everyone knows September is one of the weakest months there. Um, and usually like we have seen like a low in October 22 and another low in October 23. So we could see another low in October 24 as well. So that's been early October, actually, like most of those other other, uh, other turning points there. So you can, you know, we do get the one year, two year cycles and stuff there. So um, the one thing I learned over, over time is those sort of one year, half year, quarter year cycles, that's sort of how markets tend to sort of uh, run and kind of rhyme and then usually sort of, you know, whether they go to, you know, low to low or, or, or low to high and high to low and stuff there. Just there's a rhythm that the market tends to sort of run through. So... They're just things that you sort of keep an eye on there. So, yeah, I'm sort of curious as to how we're going to trade into that sort of maybe this September, October window. Often, at times, we don't see big uh, corrections in in these sort of election years, um, but it can get a little messy throughout that period there. So, um, the two K, the two dates I'm really looking at for Chris is the is that equinox sort of date. That that can be a bit of a seasonal. Um, turning point, but I think it's more important this year because that is when the Fed um, makes it cuts. And, and is likely to make break cuts. So I think it's going to be quite an important date here for the market there. And and then also sort of um, early October as well, just because that'll only be a couple of weeks sort of following that. Um, and that sort of, you know, sets you up sort of prior to the month before the, the election as well. So, so you've got a few things sort of happening here. So yeah, there's, a, there's a, just a few potential setups there. It's like the, the 10, 20 year and a 16 cycle there, but all got sort of slightly different makeups at the moment. So just got to probably try and follow the price action here to see rather than trying to guess too far ahead. But I think last week that moved down there, coming off that sort of lower right shoulder here. And, and probably the level that it did fire resistance there does sort of tend to indicate that we're probably going to um, probably have some follow through the downside. So whether that tightens up in here, maybe it only has a mild correction, stays off the last swing low, or whether we break that, you know, whether we break the last swing low. I mean, that normally you're sort of looking for like a little ABC is sort of is the most common sort of correction that you that you'd see, and then and then then we go and you know, so maybe we get like an undercut of the low, and then then we get the you know, the run up to the towards the end of the year. So, um, you know, it's just. Probably not an election year without an end of year rally. That's that's probably you know that's that I think you're talking about maybe one out of every ten doesn't have the 
um, end of year rally. So, so the odds do favour it. Sort of they're moving. Just just there's to be just generally pretty weak and a bit messy around that sort of September October. So it's probably just a time to be a little bit lighter here. And so I'm struggling to find too many what I what I call a set up here at the moment. It's pretty messy. Um, funny thing is I'm sort of selling off here. So um, there's some interesting sort of seasonality and some of those resource names as well that are under, under the pumping. So uh, I think if you're patient there, there could be some really, really, really good um, ending remedies for that for that sector if we don't jump in too early hearing it, get a little dagger to our sides. You know? So because they can, they, they can be, those resource labs can come off pretty quickly. We've seen here pretty, a bit of a waterfall decline again. So, um, but I guess the thing that I find most interesting, Chris, is that because we go back and look at those um, high inflation periods of the past, we've seen some pretty big moves in uh, energy and precious metals and just commodities in general. And we've seen some really big boom and bust cycles, but we've actually seen um, them not just have a boom and bust cycle, but do it over again and, and maybe even do it third time. So, so I was sort of thinking now we're, we're, we're everyone's gone from sort of um, soft landing to hard landing in a matter of three, three or four weeks here. Now it's getting drawn off pretty bad here. But I can tell you, if you look at those sort of 70s there, when the energy had some big moves, but then it had some equally big years down and then had some big moves again. So to me, the one that really stands out to me is that the energy is really getting hit hard, pretty hard here. Yet the sort of probably the fundamentals tell us that we're going to be Energy is going to be required here for quite a bit, and um, all these sort of um, yeah, data centers and everything else we've got going on in the world here, so that the energy is going to be you know pretty fully in demand for quite a while here. So I just see that really interesting there. Just, that's a sector that I sort of think just because history tells us that that can bounce back again and have an, have another rip. So um, you're seeing here all under pressure, all stocks, Iranians under pressure. Coal under pressure. All those sectors are all under pressure. They're all falling off because um, we think recession is coming and we're not going to, it will be a lack there. But if, you know, if the market's wrong about inflation, if the market's wrong about a recession here, then those stocks could really bounce pretty, not just have a bit of a dead cat bounce, but actually, you know, history says they could bounce back pretty aggressively. So that's, that's an area that I'm watching pretty closely because I'm just not sure. History says that, you know, Central banks often will go a bit too early, and then inflation law, you know, does have a habit of coming back, you know, pretty sticky. So it's why it's been difficult to to, to get inflation under control. So um, probably taken a lot longer than most people thought, but that's history tells us that exactly the case. But can come back as well pretty quickly. Uh, central banks make the wrong type of moves here, so that's still a risk based on what history tells us. So. Um, yeah, so we just—I find that's probably that's probably the most interesting thing is that some of these commodities are getting getting sort of um, hit pretty hard here. History says that maybe they can have another rally, not just a, an average rally, but a, another really aggressive rally. So um, that's probably going to require me to go and do some more homework on that, have a look at that closely, and just see what other other moves go. I wouldn't mind sort of go back and look at seventies and see what actually. You sort of look at the, the energy, look at the sort of sectors, they, they're pretty buoyant, bounce back pretty hard there, but actually really end up on the stops and just sort of seeing what actually occurred there. Because the 70s had some big moves up and down, up and down, up and down. So we've already got that volatility in the market ready. Um, we've already got the inflation. Yeah. But could we, could we see a, you know, could we see a V shaped bottom on some of these commodities? That's what I find. That's, well, that- I, don't know, I don't know the answer to that, but. Um, this tree is saying that it's, it's a possibility. Well, as you're talking about the 70s and those whipsaw movements and then seeing them go sort of boom, bust, boom, bust, uh, Stan Weinstein's book where he goes through in his 70s in great detail. So I remember reading it, and this is during the time of the Florida super cycle where Florida's just ramped for years. And he was talking about bull cycles and bull phases as it lasted three, six, nine months, and then they'd go for bear phases for four or five months. And then they'd be you back into a bull phase. And it was just like your charts show, and we'll put a link below for your seventh inflation research. That sort of volatility. So 
you say that kind of thing is possible with commodities. We can have them fully off the leaf, and we'll get to those charts in a second for the individual ASX companies that you've put in this week's report. You're saying we can have those heavy periods where they fall 10, 15%, and then rally 20% only three or four months later, and so they'd be falling another 10 or 15%. Is that possible in this environment? Yeah, I mean, some of the uh, the numbers, like just the whole numbers of each year, um, show that is possible. But I, I actually, I haven't actually drilled into um, going through some charts of those sectors, specific sort of stocks. So I'd love to go through some some of the big name energy stocks in the seventies. See if I can get some charts here for the decade and see the type of moves there, because that's that might be a bit more revealing than just a table each year of. Of this total bet, yeah, yeah, this asset yeah. fast was up 100%. Then it was down, you know, that was up 200% the next year. Then it was down 150%. And then it was up another 100%. And then so down 50 and down, you know, so there was some big, oh, there were some big moves. I know that just looking at the whole numbers each year, but I'd like to sort of drill in and actually have a look at some of those. Um, so I just, I need to go for a bit of, do a bit of a data search there, a little bit some energy names, some big, names from the 70s and look at some 10 year charts there to see what those um transpired i think that 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 will be probably more revealing there yeah i mean i, I think i know what it's going to look like but i don't want to get out you know sometimes um we know that our, our biases can get in the way of um of reality and yes. uh, but yeah but it does it does highlight there sort of like yeah and you've seen that the market turns so quickly here you go from one camp to the other um you know we've gone from Soft landing and hard landing pretty quickly here. So, um, you know, I mean, what if central banks cut rates here and all of a sudden they get a little bit too aggressive for us and then inflation does rear its head again, then that, those commodities will they'll flash back again. So, mm-hmm. um, so that, that that's definitely a possibility. Um, and history says that's actually a strong probability. Um, so it's whether it gets managed you know, uh, out here. So, I mean, look, maybe the central, maybe the, the Fed does everything right, and we don't get any you know, inflation killed, and we don't get any, you know, inflation stays low, and we're, and we're on top of it, and then um, rates basically come lower, equity markets open up here, um, and inflation stays where it is, and we just have a good time for the rest, you know, next few years. That's yeah, it's a little bit too godly looks to me, but um, but that's a possibility as well. But um, there, there is still. There's still, you know, history sort of says here that inflation's pretty sticky. It can it does have a habit of flashing back here. So, um, you know, if if that's a possibility there, then those commodities could you know, bounce back here a lot stronger than most people are probably thinking. Well, uh, we'll definitely look at those charts just for where they currently are this year. And interested to see. Uh, I don't want Kim to dig up those charts, especially with all the mergers and acquisitions that have happened in the last couple of decades. But the S and P five hundred. Obviously, the more broader index, it did sort of have that double top. Didn't quite get through it. But you're saying it's important resistance level, and then you've kind of got a trend line. Is this kind of becoming a magnet now that we've hit this resistance level? It's kind of like looks like it's drawing into this trend line, or how did, what do you see happening? Yeah, that makes the most amount of sense to me. Is it just to probably have a bit of a messy period? Um, probably be nice to actually have a bit of a time consuming, um, you know, pullback here. Just something a bit messy there. Um, Use up a bit of time and then just hold that level there. So we typically election years don't get big corrections. Um, you talked about we've had what six six uh, percent, maybe eight and a half percent, someone. So some of the innocent. So that's that's quite the norm there. Um, we know September October can be a little messy there, so maybe we'll get a little bit. Uh, but we just don't get big drawdowns in election years typically. So um, it just might be a little messy here for a while. So um, but that's that's. You know, kind of more of a, you know, I just think we probably just need to sort of come back and um, find some sort of uh, low here, maybe maybe early October would be probably perfect and then and run through to the um, end of the year or something like um, The US election is going to be pretty interesting this year, so that, that definitely can sort of throw up a bit more extra volatility, but um, history normally sort of says that it um, doesn't matter who gets in, the certainty of knowing who's in sort of the markets will often rally uh, to that like and so can get a bit of a bounce you know maybe out of september october low maybe up into you know maybe a week or two before the election but then you get a little bit of a dip 
going into the election, you're never going to be uncertainly what the outcome is, and then post election like it doesn't cover, but it does doesn't always go to plan, can can invert. Um there have been a few November highs as well. So um yeah, it'll just be interesting to see how it all plays out here. All right, well that's um what we've got with the S and P five hundred, obviously election heavy for the inputs to what happens there. Australia less so, but still going to be driven by what happens in the international markets. We've got the Aussie. We are above that point that we just struggled to get to through for so long. Is this trend line, if we sort of extrapolate what you had with the S&P 500, you had a trend line as a bit of a support zone. Is that looking like that could be a support zone for the Aussie and keep us above this congestion area of like the 7,500 that we struggled to get through for so long? Yeah, and I mean, look, look, we're seeing clear buying of the dips there. We have sort of broken out, come back, retested that zone. Um, did break out, but then came away back again. It's a bit messy here. So, look, definitely has been sort of messy overall. Probably it suggests that, you know, that maybe we'll tighten up again. We, to be honest, probably the best thing we can see here is probably three or four weeks of, you know, sort of downward action, but they're staying kind of tight there or maybe maybe tightening up there or not, not sort of coming up too much. So, um, yeah, so probably probably seeing some sort of drawdown would be nice there, but just not seeing, seeing too deep there. Um, and yeah, I guess coming back to that trend line would be probably the ideal setup there. You know, if we maybe we can just have the next group four weeks, and then then set up for that end of year rally again, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it looks definitely being pretty messy, pretty choppy. Um, not particularly sort of clean there. Our market obviously probably less trending than some of the other other indices, but. Um, yeah, that's that's probably the ideal setup there, just in terms of where we are um, in seasonal calendar there. Right. Well, the Dow Jones into the US once again, but uh, it's looked like the most positive chart in the last couple of weeks and months from the setup and where it's maintained itself. However, last week closing heavy on the fifth of Friday session and came back into that range. How important is it that it's come into that range? How critical is it? Uh, and does that kind of imply that it would go to the lower end and sort of find that similar support line that we've had mapped out for the Aussie and the S&P 500? Is that kind of becoming a magnet for the Dow? Yeah, not necessarily there. It's just, I guess, kind of showing that because, you know, once you start breaking those um, those trend lines, then they, they become less valid for us as well. So normally sort of like you, you sort of hug that zone for a long period of time there, it becomes, you know, definitely becomes more valid. But then once you sort of start breaking above and below it there, it becomes less important. So to me, that sort of that upper line is probably less important. Um, but maybe the lower line is probably the more important one here now. Because that so far that one has held. That's probably that's probably more important here longer term. So again, maybe we'll drift back to the lower sort of trend line here again. Um, and then and go off that. So that's probably more important that we hold that, that lower um support line there. Anyway, well, that's Dow Jones. If we go into what you were talking about before, you're talking about some of the large commodity companies on the ASX getting hit fairly hard and then possibly seeing opportunities. It may coincide with the Fed announcement, the Equinox, and then about a month out from the elections, and that could be just a little bit before so many of the October lows that we've seen. So there's a lot of potential there, but as you're saying, it's kind of too early to tell. What can you tell from the charts at the moment and where do you put your markers as to kind of lines in the sand you'd like to see drawn or if X happens, Y becomes more probable? Yeah, like this is one of those stocks that's really come off pretty hard here. Everyone's probably talking about rare resources here just because it has been a bit of more, you know, um, strong before in the past, a bit, a bit of an A uh, quality stock here. But does sort of, you know, it's, it's now sort of in a bit of a sector which is under the pressure there. Obviously, lithium and iron ore both under pressure there. There's a few concerns around gear and level in the resources as well. Um, so, you know, ha- has had a pretty deep pullback there. It, it, I guess the thing about this stock is it's pretty high beta crits as well. So, I um, can tell you the average move for the last 10 years in the vendors is like over 10%. So, it's it moves. So, um, so I think, yeah, sort of, um, I was looking at the stock here, just sort of like trying to find some sort of technical areas where, you know, and oftentimes you're looking at sort of old highs, old lows there, that, that could be levels of support. And then just measuring the move from the first leg down as well, and just seeing what, what level sort of stood out there. So the, the, the first thing that did sort of stand up to me was that, that that sort of moved down 
did find a bit of a um, did snap did, did sort of snap back to the thirty eight point two level. So I thought, okay, this has an extension there. That's probably a level to look at there. So whether you look at the thirty eight point two or you look at the one sixty one point eight, so that's been important in the past. That could be important again. So that does sort of give us an area around twenty five dollars as a potential level. And that um, does happen to be sort of an old low as well. Um, on the way there, so that's a bit of a level to keep an eye on there. Probably not, not so treacherous as well is that um, probably one and a half times, um, and also an old high there is around that sort of thirty dollar mark as well. So that's another level to, to keep an eye on here. So we're probably there at the moment, thirty bucks. So whether it can hold here or not, um, but yeah, there's you know there's a couple of levels to sort of watch in there. That's probably my little window is to sort of okay, there's there's those are the price zones there. But what you want to sort of see is you know talked about this on Friday as well, they're seeing some sort of support there, rather than just sort of buying it blindly into a falling knife, you'd want to sort of see a bit of a bounce, maybe price tighten up, maybe make a second high low, and then break some sort of um, little B wave, or just break some sort of consolidation there, so I think, you know, sit back here and just sort of watch this one here, but yeah, I think this is a, definitely a stock that sort of come out, um, and yeah, so I think um, Historically, seasonally, November and December are the probably two strongest months for mineral resources here. So, um, you know, this weekends off here over the over the next few weeks um, might might build a base in October there, but it, you know, could come out of here November, December pretty strong if you look at some of the seasonality on that stock. So, um, definitely one we're keeping an eye on here. And it's on the radar there, but I'll, I'll I want to see some price action that sort of um, to build it action first before it jump in and um, catch this knife that might go straight through you. So, um, yeah, Is that, that, I mean, it looks pretty looks, looks pretty oversold here, but we know that, you know, you and I, Chris, know these stocks that, that run and all the other ones that sort of decline, they, they can go a lot further down, a lot further up than the Nederon Peak. So, um, yeah, you just got to be a bit cautious there. So with that sort of gearing and the negativity in lift in particular, um, might just put a bit more pressure on on the stock here, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be worried about. It. I think I think twenty five dollars would be pretty interesting if it got down there. That that'd be, you know, I'd, I'd always be tempted to put a little parcel on my super fund there uh, if I saw it get down there. All right, but obviously you do want to see that confirmation as well, volume support, and you've talked about accumulation still up with zero one two three lows, all that kind of thing. So we'll maybe see more of that, but twenty five, well. A bit of an interesting level to see if it gets there. BHP in a similar space, less of a beta, but much larger capitalized company up until a couple of months ago was the largest on the ASX. However, it has fallen and the fall that it has had coming from over $50, which is false break on the chart you've got here. We're now south of thought $40, probed it, but we got back under it. We closed the week under it. And you've got a box here, which has this coming back towards and I want to just call this out on the chart here. The 2019, 2011, and 2007 high. How important is it to have a triple high there and it doesn't become gravity and a magnet that drives us back towards that range? Yeah, it can do. It can do, yeah. When I was sort of looking at, you know, again, when I, we had that false break of the high, I said that some pumps suggest should come back to last when below, which was around about $41 mark there. So we'd take, we've already sort of hit that level there. Um, so that can be a level that comes back to and bounces there, but it has had a bit of follow through there. So it's really looking through here. I mean, um, yeah, looking at the chart there, thirty six dollars is a bit of a level. That's sort of um, well, recently, but if I went back historically, that um, yeah, nineteen eleven and, and two thousand seven high, there was a lot of touches around there. So that's that's an old buy. Just, just again, we just sort of know that you know, you look at those charts historically, you know, longer term. So the markets will come back and sit on top of the old high. They they're just, they're just do that over and over again. So, um, unfortunately, what most people don't do is they, they look at the dailies or the weeklies and, and don't go back and look at some of the monthly, some of the longer term charts there. So, that that is a big level there because it's had multiple clutches there in the past. And that was an old, you know, those, those were old highs as well before we broke them through there. So, that's why sometimes we, we do, markets have a habit of coming back there. And we, we can see that even in 22. It did sort of build off that you know, the level as well. So, um, yeah. So it's just it's a pretty big 
pretty big level there around that sort of the 37 there for um for, for BHB. So be just interesting to see whether we get down there or not. All right. Well, the next one in the list, Select Harvest, different part of the market indeed, and a different part of the chart. It has shown strength coming out of mid-May lows, climbing, having a bit of a pullback coming into July, but out through the reporting season, uh, it also had a pullback coming into the second half of July. It did that rapid climb from sort of the three dollar fifty area, getting over four dollars fifty, and then pulling back. If we look at that, that's about a dollar gain. And then what have we pulled back for four or five times as long, but didn't quite properly stayed halfway. How does that fit into your analysis of Select Harvest and finding an opportunity there? Yeah, and no, I look it's still pretty tight too, that uh price action. So it has sort of tightened up. Not a lot of volume in there as well. So I think that looks sort of constructive from that point of view. Um, just because the market's a little bit weak here, definitely just want to sort of see uh, a sign of strength there because we're sort of seeing like a lot of um, a lot of congestion, a little bit of weakness and stuff there um, and, and pretty volatile sort of price action there. So I, I thought this one looks quite good there. Um, I like the fact it's gone back to retest the high, just sort of you know, crawling up under the high here. Um, not a lot of volume here recently, so but it, it can meander around here, but Chris it can can sort of hang around here a bit longer here before um sort of breaks up here. So I just think you want to sort of see, you know, I think it's one of those stocks that's holding up quite nicely there, showing a bit of relative strength and um yeah the, you know, I think the price and volume looks pretty attractive as well. So just yeah, just just want to probably see a break of that sort of four twenty five zone there. Just that sort of had we you know had a couple of touches there now, sort of hasn't been able to reach that level. So um, yeah, that's definitely a level to sort of keep an eye on there. I think if we break that level, then it you know, could go through. But I think the, we'll go back and retest the high for one thing. But then ultimately, we might we might be able to push through that high if you're looking at some of the longer term charts on there. So those look kind of constructive. Nice. Well, it's good to have a constructive chart as the market's been falling. Block. SQ2 is tick up. Still in that sideways consolidation, albeit extremely wide in the sense that it's coming from $90 to $130. But it's fallen back from $130 in what seemed to be a steady decline and then seemed to go going sideways in particularly the last three or four weeks on this weekly chart. have been somewhat slow in comparison. Yeah, so it's very, very tight. Look, look at the volume there, Chris, as well. No, you know, very lightly traded in those three weeks as well there. So no, so no price. Even. So just look like a bit of accumulation occurring at the low, around that low. And then we've had a little bit of a sideways sort of shimmy here with uh, not much volume there. So the, the sector itself there, we've seen, you know, Zip, Pyro, um, Hum, just some pretty strong results there. So some strong price action. So we, you know, you and I know, Chris, the importance of being in a strong uh, sector. Um, you know, your 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 you know your your odds of success are always double if you're you're trading in the in a strong sector here, yeah. uh, as opposed to a weak sector. So, um, you know, if this was a resource name here, you'd probably be pretty hesitant. But this is in a sector that's um, definitely showing some relative strength overall as well. So, um, yeah, I think it looks sort of pretty constructive as well. Nice. Well, we go to the biggest company on the bourse now, not what's known internationally as the big Australian BHP, but the biggest on the bourse, CBA, with that stellar run going from 100, which seemed to toy and struggle to get through 100, 110 for some time over the last couple of years, but that has tracked it and is now north towards 145. We've talked about this a few times historically. The multiples that it's trading on, which is a value that you look at companies from a fundamental perspective to look at whether they're cheap or expensive from a historical perspective for that company against their peers as well, it's very expensive. Its yield, historically very low. Its growth outlook from an analyst or their own market commentary, rather low, even shrinking at times. So putting that together, this company's shooting the lights out and has climbed significantly and is now the biggest on the bourse. When you look yep. at the chart, what do you see? Yeah, that's no, it's funny. I think I think the average, I think most broker value is sitting under a hundred dollars. So uh, definitely, is going against the grain here. Um, but I mean, as I said, we, we know some of the momentum they can sort of keep pushing up here. But all I guess I would say is like, if you look at sort of 
in the past, I've sort of noticed a lot of these stocks will sort of, um, you know, these sort of stronger names there. Um, and then some of the sort of, you know, what I call, you know, more important sort of top and bottoms there, they will be in denominations of sort of cycles and that, and, and usually like the denomination of a half year or full year or a quarter year cycle. So oftentimes they can go like a, like the last league up can be three months into the top or they can go maybe half a year from the last top or half a year from the last low or something like that. So there's just a few cycles to be sort of wary of there. So there was a cycle there about six weeks ago, which I did identify. We did get a bit of a reaction there last time, but it wasn't that important. I think it had a, I think it came off pretty hard for about six days. Um, stock might have dropped about six or eight bucks in one of those days in particular there, but, but it, yeah, it did, it has bounced back there again. So it's down now sort of another new high, which is pretty incredible, pretty breathtaking for, for you know, what is a, is sort of a, a stock with pretty flat earnings here. But um, again, just looking for some potential sort of timing there. So do have a bit of timing here sort of around end of last week, sort of start of this week. Um, and that that's another sort of half year sort of cycle there. So it's just telling me pretty, you know, just be careful here. As cautious ever, there might be a, you know, um, just to, in the past, there was seen markets sort of turn around these dates there. So usually I still rec- um, allow for a day or two. They can get an extra day or something. Um, but, but yeah, it just, that does look very extended, very vertical here. Uh, and uh, just has some timing here as well. So, yeah, we'll see what we can get a reaction. We, we, Maybe why to get a small reaction like last time, but who knows? But um, just some risk there, just based on what I've observed over the past and time. There, these um, these cycles can be important. Yeah. That's well, uh, it's, it's basically half a year from the last from that. Um, I mean, I think eighth of eighth of March was the sort of last sort of key high. We had a little bit of a three way pull there, and then we've gone vertical pretty much sort of since then. So that's kind of the last high there. So that. 180 days or 90 days from that um, is important there. Or, or 90 days and 180 days from the last low can be important as well. So they're they're often how they do culminate. So just sort of something just to be you know, to be um to be mindful of. Um, yeah, this yeah, it's got pretty vertical. There's a pretty pretty fast move there. The thing I did like actually when I extended that range out was that um, I went back to my GAN ranges, which was like your your one eighths of your um, like rather the Fibonacci's, I looked at the GAN ranges, which is like um, one eighth ranges and stuff like that, because GAN looked at one eighth and one, you know, um, one third, things like that. So this has run sort of like the last leg up is three eighths of that, you know, of the entire range. And I think I've sort of said in the past that sometimes the last leg can be like 50% of the whole move. Um, this, this is, um, this is going back on a monthly chart as well. So that's pretty that's a pretty decent move here. So from one one ten to sort of one forty four there, that's kind of three eighths of our monthly range there. So it's a fair it's a fair move in a short period of time here. So that's why you're gonna be careful of sort of really sharp, aggressive moves at the end of a move there. Well the timing can sound odd, but I remember you were trading and you did buy uh, some shorts and uh did quite well. So I know you won't often talk about it. Uh, your throwing trades in that sense when you you won't give yourself credit for it but at that time you were talking about the timing and people can go back to the videos and have a look and I uh, remember you did trade quite handsomely with that but in this space we do have CBA as being the largest it's not the best performer in the last 12 months that's interesting we've seen another bank take out the title the one that's taken the wooden spoon for big four banks from the ASX is ANZ they've had some pretty poor form from their bond trading side of things. And uh, it was interesting to see that they had made no progress from their last inquiry on that about four or five years ago, which is terrible. That does reflect on their share price being the laggard in the group. However, they still have gained and put on more than definitely the miners. What's ANZ chart telling you? Yes, I just noticed that we did go back and retest the 07 high on Friday as well. So that's a big, yeah, big level to go back up to there. So it's not that not the all time high for this stock here. The stock did go high there in um I think it was 2014, 2015, but the O seven high was pretty important there. So we have sort of gone back up to that level there. Um 
And uh, yeah, again, I guess it's a bit like CDA there. It's pretty, you know, it's trading a fan multiple um, and had a few issues as well as, as you as you've sort of highlighted there. And, you know, just notice a bit of timing here as well. Again, sort of a few sort of longer term cycles there sort of telling us to be sort of be careful there. And, but when I drilled into like the dailies, um, I just saw so many um, smaller cycles all culminating out as well um, around this sort of weekend. So I thought, well, wow, that's like, um, I haven't seen that many cycles all sort of, um, you know, all lined up at the, uh, the same sort of timing here. So that's just telling me pretty big, again, getting me pretty cautious there. And, and again, look at, look at the mood, 27 or 32 in a matter of what, five weeks there. So this is not just a, like coming off a low over there. That's sort of, this has been trending up for, for a while here. So, um, yeah, look, look, maybe it keeps going here. Maybe the, you know, maybe, maybe these things just keep going for us. We don't, we don't know here, but, um, just or do all of those that, um, you know, my study of cycles in the past has tell us to be sort of careful or we might be mindful of sort of the half yearly and 40 yearly sort of from the previous highs and lows. And so we're, we're right at it here at the moment. And the fact that we have sort of gone straight up into taking out the 07 high then pretty quick time, this tells me to be a little cautious here with that. Right. Well, there we go. Being forced into what is going to be quite a news heavy period. We've got the election, we've got the Fed rates. We do have the equinox, which is just timing. And then looking at all these timings of the Bates does become quite interesting compelling. Thank you very much, Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Thanks, Chris. I'll put a link on screen for that 40s and 70s inflation research. It keeps coming up again and again and again because it is so important to understand how the markets have treated this sort of inflationary environment in the past. It's our best blueprint and has proved very well.